What are these? Emma, Jane Austen. Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens, Tom Sawyer, Ben Hur, The Jungle Books. A lot of classics there. Frankenstein. Nail polish. Emery board. Is that what those are called? Emery board. Another ginger ale. A lot of unopened sodas for some reason. The Misfits. That's a really cool logo design, actually. I really like that. Nice. Just random crap. Coupons. Why? Uh, I guess she took out the drawers to make it like this. That's weird. I'm checking everything just in case she like scribbled the password down somewhere. What is... Whoa. What is that? Hello. Look whose dad is weird. What? <laughs> huh? Uh, put back. Look whose dad is weird. It's a label. Label for what, though? Hmm. Malace, or something like that? Pacific Institute of Art Exhibition, August 19th to November 30th, 1991. Oh, hello. Crumpled note. Incident... Oh, whoa. Disciplinary referral. Hmm, I guess she was getting in trouble, or... Oh no, wait. Student name, Yolanda DeSoto, grade 12. Okay, so Yolanda, that must be Lonnie, right? Yolanda, Lonnie, DeSoto, so that is the the woman from the picture in the army uniform. Dates 9-18-1994. It's in the morning. Teacher room, it's in the hall. Factual description of incident. Mr. Benchley observed uh, Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large beer can labeled... Pepsed Blue Ribbon. Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Action taken by faculty. Miss DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or be sus suspended for the rest of the day. Miss DeSoto chose suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer and no answering machine. Miss DeSoto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. Hmm. Administrator, yep, that's the date. Yeah, that's Lonnie. And there's no parent signature. Why, why do I have this? Why does Sam have this? I guess she probably showed it to Sam. Huh. But no answer from her parents and no answering machine. Huh. Were her parents just neglectful or, or what? Or maybe she hated them and... I don't know. Is there anything else in there? Hold on, let me just check. <laughs> let me go through the trash. No, that's it. Lots of little details in here. Hello, Fork. You thought you could get away from me, Fork. Nope. Gotta check the bottom of the cups. Grab Steggy? Stelly? <laughs> Stegosaurus or whatever they're called. Oh, that thing's adorable. Oh, what is that? Steggy. Steggy! Nothing under the pillow. I'm surprised. I want to believe. Okay, I'm pretty sure it was her that was into sci fi. I can't jump, so I can't get behind the bed. Is there anything back there? Nah. Alright, what's down here? What is this? Anything else? Two notes down here. Samantha Greenbrier, Year 11. Fletcher, Period 5, Shop. Assignments, Metalworking, Engraving. Grade C-. minus. Ooh. Notes. Not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait, reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just add them underneath. 
Acceptable leveling on edges should uh, show more pride in work. Hmm. When I s interesting. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I do not just mean adding them underneath. It, it sounds like she didn't really want to put her parents on there. And given what I've seen about her being pissed off at them for not letting her go out more, it sounds like she really was not very happy with them at all. It sounds like she didn't have a very good relationship with them. Oh, Examine Magazine. I didn't realize I could do that. Groove, Kurt Cobain, 1967 to 1994. Soundgarden exclusive interview. Tool, Raging Against the Machine. The Brother 150. This is the one me and my dad are building. Want to go for a ride when it's done? Um, is that from Lonnie? Hmm. Wait, I think it's 142 miles per gallon. Wait, wait, seriously? That much? Holy shit! Damn. 16 horsepower. Well, for a car, that's terrible, but it's a bike, so I don't know if that's good or bad. 16 horsepower. It doesn't sound like a lot. But there's not a lot of weight for it to carry, either. Hmm. Okay, um, what's left? I guess here, is this a closet? Or... Oh, no, no, there's two entrances to the this place. Now, have I looked at everything? There, there, there. There, there. <laughs> Let's leave that off. Hmm. I wonder what her locker password... Oh, yeah, I never looked at this. I wonder what her locker password would be. Looks like a bunch of celebrities. I wonder if I can even recognize any of them. I haven't had that much to drink. Jodie Foss... Wait, Jodie Foss... Wait, that... That's Jodie Foster? Oh, 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 it's a conversation. Uh, yeah, that's not Jodie Foster. That's Jodie Foster, okay, I think. When she was younger. I can see that. I haven't had that... I haven't had that... Oh, what a party is the name of this, I guess. I haven't had that much to drink, Jodie Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> You'd better not have been reading my secret diary again. Uh... Here you go, Bitten. Have some... Pate? Gross. Morale. <laughs> what? <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. What about 1995? I don't think that'd be it. No, it doesn't make any sense. 101.7. Hmm. I can't think of what the password would be. It's uh, I might I'm, it's possible I just don't find it in the room. That's very very possible. So I'm not going to just bash my head against a wall trying to look for it. All right. So I read that. I went in there. Let's go down here. Where am I? Let me look at the map. Sam's room. Let's go over here. Hey Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? Uh, it came out last weekend and told... Um, uh, hold on. I can kind of read it, but it'd be a lot faster if I do this. It came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it, so it's either, it's either good or we can make fun of him for liking it. My mom is supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I can just ditch out on it probably. Oh yeah, yeah so this is Lonnie replying. Um, also, uh, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? And then back to Sam. According to Todd, it's pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> also, something about cheeseburgers is important. I think Todd's going to come so he can see it again, if that's okay. 7.15? Okay. Don't barf. And then back to Lonnie. Alright, see you then. And <laughs> it's a barfing cheeseburger. Interesting. Alright, so that was that Pulp Fiction movie ticket I saw. See, I love how all these things in the environment tie together. 
you know, they're all connected. They're just, they're not just random, but they're all part of a bigger picture that I'm slowly uncovering. That's so cool. I love it. All right, what is this room? Oh, bathroom. Oh, right. Yeah, I already picked this up. Um, But since I restarted the game and had to start a new game, let's do this again. And now it'll make sense in context. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. That's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited. And the moment was gone. Oh, that's so sweet. It's even sweeter now that I read it or listened to it in context with everything else I now know. Whoa, what is that? That's a label. Lonnie Rules. Actually, that's, that's yet another thing that this game is reminding me, reminding me of from my childhood. Those little label maker plastic impression things that make these. I don't know what the hell they're called. I, I used to love those as a kid, too. Like, what? What is it about these things that are somewhat universal, or at least wide, you know, widely common? Like, what is it with kids and stickers and posters, or not kids, but, you know, kids and young people, with stickers and posters and these things and the glowing stars and... Why is that? Why is there so much in common? It's weird. Like, this just makes me think of my childhood so damn much. Quick fix. Sorry, I already saw those before. Toothpaste. Cinnamon cavity protection plaque remover. Whoops. Nail polish. N nailed it. Feeling blue, really? That's so cheesy. Nailed it. Toothbrush. Say, what? Hey, it looks like I'm brushing my teeth. There we go, back and forth, and we're good. Wait, oh shit, I'm sorry. Oh no, I messed everything up. Toothbrush! Wait, wait, where, where'd the toothbrush go? Uh, did it go behind? No, did it go behind? Wait, is that it? Is it in the floor? Toothbrush. Whoa, I saw it. Hold on. Gra gra ah. There we go. I'm sorry, toothbrush. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Here, here, here. Oh yeah, um, I was gonna say, how come this bathroom has no mirror? Like, shouldn't it be like right here? Instead, there's a light. Weird. Hold on, what's this? Oh, it's a cup. Same old soap, right? Sparkle apple hand soap, yep. Box, what is this? Extra absorbency. Is that a tampon? I think it's a tampon. What? Whoa, calm down. Calm down, tampon. Emery board. Toilet paper. Oh, guess this one's broken. Hmm. Interesting. Any particular reason for that? Is there something hiding? Oh yeah, I never fully read this. Wild color, red right hand, semi-permanent hair color, not test on animals, original formula. Alright, what does that say? Instructions! Empty desired amount of wild color into a plastic bowl. 
Half bottle for short hair, whole bottle for long hair. Apply evenly to, to dry hair. Do not apply to scalp. Saturate hair thoroughly and evenly. Leave on hair for 15 to 30 minutes. Rinse hair thoroughly until water runs clear. Blow everyone's mind with your wild color! Lighten your hair before using this. Dye if you want it to be really bright. The lighter the better. Hmm. Honestly, hair dye sounds kind of scary. For some reason, I just imagine when you put it on, it'd be like some horrible acid, and it would melt your scalp off. That's obviously stupid, but... Um, I went there, went there, went down there. Okay, what's down here? That was the bathroom. Yeah, that's the bathroom. Alright, what's in here? Hmm, this looks like this is probably their bedroom. Uh, Terrence and Jan's bedroom, probably. So, I get the feeling, like Sam said... Uh, what'd she say? T like, tell parents, uh, tell our parents I'm sorry about what I took or something like that? I get the feeling that she was rummaging through everything. Like, she was alone, and she was rummaging through everything trying to get something or collect multiple things before she ran off or something. Because everything looks like it's been just, like, ransacked. Mom's purse. God, this game is amazing. I've lost track of time. I've been playing this for over two hours, like two and a half hours or something. And I've totally lost track of time. An Earth Day benefit celebration, music for the planet. Featuring Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Willie Nelson. April 22nd, 1982. Kit... what is it? Kit... Kitsap County Fairground? Well, let me turn this on. There we go. Much better. Postcard? Was that one of my postcards? Dear... whoops. Dear Mom and Dad, and Sam, I am in the channel. This is my second passage through the channel. Or, wait, is that Chanel? Ch Ch what the fuck is that? Hold on. Now I'm curious. I thought I said channel at first, but now I think I said something different. I'm in the... channel. What is the channel? This is my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back from London, this time going to... Brussels, Belgium? Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. What was the channel? London was great. Dad, I... Er, this makes it easier to read. I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'd love it. If you all wanted to come back here as a family sometimes, I guess I could, I could be convinced. Love you all, Katie. Well, it sounds like she's having a really good time. Or, I, I guess, it sounds like I was having a really good time, since that is the character I'm playing, after all. Which reminds me, I should probably save the game. Mm, no, it'll be fine. I just won't go into the graphics. And it shouldn't crash, right? Yeah. I'm worried that saving it will actually crash it, sort of. Another Bible. Okay, that's starting to worry me. For reasons I will discuss later when there's more details. Business card. What the hell? Unknown Dimension Literature. Michigan Avenue, Newark, New Jersey. I mean, New Jersey. Kaz Publisher. Communication must become totally unconscious before we can stop it. William Seward Burroughs. I guess that's someone Terrence was talking to about publishing his stuff. Hmm. Anything under the bed? I'm looking for you hidden notes. Nothing. Notes! Nothing. Close, close, close. Close, close, close. Open, close. 
<laughs> close, close, close. Oh, what, what is that? Oh, barf. What? Oh, oh, fuck, that's a condom. Oh, ew. That is gross. Parents condom. Let's pick it up. <laughs> Nero, Nero, lubricated. One premium lubricated latex condom. Wait, what did that say? I do There's nothing I don't hate right now. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's just put that away. What the hell? Look, this one. Look, there's VHS tapes everywhere. So obviously there's a there should be a VCR. That's a third TV where there should be a VCR, but it seems to be missing. Did Sam take all of the VCRs? And if she did, then why? All right. Bridge on the on the river, Quay. Silence of the Lambs. I don't know what the hell that says. It's all in cursive. What's that? Gone with the Wind. Some more classics there. Oh, what is that? All the President's Men. Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, Fugitive. Lovely. Mitten. Aw, Mitten. Mitten? What does it say? One one cat? Caitlin. Age five. <laughs> this is from me when I was five. Aw, Mitten. Another nice watercolor up there. That... Oh, that's a different picture. From the one that was out in the, the main hall. Whoops. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's us when we were way younger. And he's still rocking that mustache. Nice, Terrence. Or Terry, whatever your nickname is. Oh, hello. Thought you could get away from me, bookmark. And book... Nothing can escape my prying eyes. I will examine every piece of lint in this house. Well, what's the book first? What is this? Walt Whitman. Leaves of Grass. <laughs> oh, Walt, well, wait a minute. It's this book, Leaves of Grass. At the moment I'm recording this, it's, um... Well, it's Thursday, so one, two, three, four... It's been four days since the premiere of the second half of the last season of Breaking Bad. Wasn't this the book? No no spoilers. I'm not going to spoil anything if you haven't seen Breaking Bad. Wasn't this the book? Related to the big moment? Leaves of Grass, wasn't it? W.W. -W. Walt Whitman? This, I think it is, yeah. Collection of Poems, uh, Walt Whitman's Collection of Poems was first released in this form in 1892, but not before it was banned on grounds of obscenity. He died only two months after its release on March 26th, 19, uh, 1892. Seeing, hearing, feelings are miracles, and each part and tag of me is a miracle. I have to admit, I am not familiar with his work at all. Bookmark. Uh, Timberline Booksellers, new used hardcover paperback periodicals, located in historic Wisteria, Wisteria Town Center. Your local source for literature since 1933. Ooh. Take your time, I'm glad to have it in good hands, Rick. Oh, that's about this book. I guess someone lent it to him. That's cool. Hold on, I've checked that, I've checked that. Um, I think... Yeah, I've checked everything except that room back there. Let me look under the bed a little bit more. 
No, that's it. Okay. What's in here? Book. Underwear. Alright, what's this book? Uh, something something technique for florals and still lifes. Oh, watercolor technique. Wait a minute. I noticed that all the paintings in this house seem to be watercolor. Maybe they were made by one of the people here? I'm guessing either Jan or Terence? Are you a watercolorist looking to improve your skills? So was Bradford Gregory once. Since he began painting with watercolors at the age of 40, he has gone on to win countless awards in national and international exhibi exhibitions. Now, with watercolor technique for florals and still lifes, he shares his years of watercolor experience with you. This book doesn't contain lists of rules, but principles and concepts that will lead you down the path to fulfilling your personal potential as an artist. For florals and still lifes, I guess that's the paintings I've been seeing, right? I mean, I've been seeing, like, landscapes and stuff. Is that... Does that count under still life? So I'm not really sure. Yeah, I guess someone's a painter. Maybe... Ooh, you know, it's probably Jan. Because she's in the forestry service, so obviously she likes nature and she's around trees a lot and stuff like that, and landscapes. Yeah, so it's probably Jan, because most of these are landscapes. And flowers and stuff. Hmm. Alright, what's in here? Bathroom. Oh god, it's another one of those hideously textured combs. I hate those things. It's like, I wonder if... It, I wonder if it's... I wonder if these are made out of Bakelite. You know, that old plastic? Like, the first plastic, I think? What the hell was that? Is that the sound of me turning the knob? Because it sounds like someone's scraping a bowl or something. Hmm. Cinnamon. Standard stuff, standard stuff. What is this? Black Friars for Men shaving cream. Hmm. Oh, they have two bathrooms. Nice. Oh my god, it just occurred to me. This doesn't even have a shower, it only has a bath. Freaking bath. That's old school. That's ancient school. <laughs> oh, and some nice candles. Shampoo. Right as rain, with jasmine and spring water for normal hair. Wait. With jasmine and spring water. Why would it matter whether it has spring water or not? You're going to stick it in your hair and then wash it away with just water. You're going to wash the water away with water. What, what does it matter? Uh, like a summer rain. Some more shaving cream. Is that a book? No, it's a tail. Well, that's a book. Uh. What? Oh. Oh, God. More of this stuff. No. After the honeymoon, rediscovering your spouse. Personally, spiritually, sexually. Reverend Alex... Uh, Alexander Michaels. Awkward. It may seem inevitable that the spark you and your spouse shared on your honeymoon should fade over time. But it doesn't have to be. Reverend Alexander Michaels will show you how to rekindle, rekindle the fire you once had. Part 1 provides simple steps to reopen the lines of communication between you and your spouse, allowing you to face the problems you share as partners instead of rivals. Part 2 leverages the Reverend's decades of service to God, helping you connect with a higher power. You'll draw strength from a spirituality you may not even know you have. Part 3 offers a number of fresh and exciting ideas for the bedroom, including a few things that may surprise you. The reserves of passion for your spouse run deep. You just have to know where to look. Reverend Michaels will show you the way. Uh, I'm going to put this back now and pretend I didn't read that. And I'm going to flush the toilet. Because I can.
Anything hidden under here? <gasps> Hello? Nope. Okay, I believe that's it for this room. Yeah. Okay. Mom and Dad's bedroom. Been there. Time to go forwards. Oh, yeah. Sam's dark room. That's going to be interesting to go up there. Because there was that half-written note about something in the attic. What is this? Storage room? Oh, it looks like a spare bedroom and what is currently a storage room since I guess they don't need it. Katie. Mom and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Sam. Wait, I won't be needing it anymore. Wait, so is she planning on being gone permanently? Or, or at least for a very long time, if she would go so far as to say, I won't be needing it anymore. Hmm. Yep, more watercolors. Let's turn some lights in here. There we go. Right, so they hadn't finished unpacking it. Lots of boxes. Hey, Sam. You're asking about my... Uh, what does it say? Hold on. You're asking about my J-R-O-T-C ribbon, uh, what my J-R-O-T-C ribbons meant. Here is a handy guide. Orienteering. Uh, this means the army thinks I can find my way around. Rifle team. The army has branded me as a certified killing machine. <laughs> Adventure training. I'm a born adventurous, and no borders can hold me. The army recognizes this. So if you don't think I was cool before, now you do. Lonnie D. Alright, and she's wearing a like an army uniform. So was she joining the army then? I I guess so. Hmm. Oh. Composition book, Samantha Greenbrier. Ghost Hunter Journal. <laughs> Ghost Hunter Journal, what the hell? Oh yeah, there was a book in the uh, the fort about ghosts and poltergeists and spirits and whatnot. And apparently this cost 81 cents. Neat. Can I read this without that? Uh, I'll do this. Sighting journal. August 31st, 1994, 1.19am. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note, I was not wearing my glasses. <laughs> Well, there's your problem. Maybe maybe you should be wearing your glasses when you're trying to go ghost sighting. Glasses for ghost sighting? Might be a good idea. Just a guess. September 3rd, 1994, 12.44 a.m. Okay, so these are all, or at least the first two are early in the morning. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Did not investigate. Probably was the furnace. Oh my god, that's adorable. September 9th, 1994, 4 p.m. Poured milk from carton in fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Moo. Also, ghost milk. Uh, what? Ghost, ghost milk? <laughs> what? Oh my god, that's adorable. Ah. Uh. September 20th, 1994, 11 p.m. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow fort. Okay, so that's what I saw. That was the pillow fort. A presence in that room. Hmm. October 1st, 1994, 11, to 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar definitely here. October 8th, 1994, 10 p.m. to October 9th, 4 a.m. Oh, so that's over a period of six hours. Hmm. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises. 
recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remained unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in attic, probably due to leaky roof. <laughs> Sample taken, just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All, all in all, a successful night. <laughs> uh. Katie, 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 bunch of storage boxes. Okay. Alright, so that was going to be my room. Oh, where am I at now? Yeah, those are guest rooms. So what's up here? Ooh, it's another cassette. Is there a cassette player in here? Yes, there is. Alright, what is this? Another Riot Girl song? Heavens to Betsy, nothing can stop me. What the hell was that noise in the beginning? It sounded like bad feedback. It's, it adds to the atmosphere, but at the same time, it's hard to think when that's playing. No offense to anyone who likes it. It's not my type of music, but it is nice just to hear a... You know, hear something that she liked. It's all about the character. Uh, where, where did this come from? I don't remember. Was it on the tape? Oh, there it is. Yeah. What is that? The Chinese puzzle. Halloween Joe. The Misfits. They're awesome. Don't forget your costume. Uh, Stygian or Stygian Lounge. 10.29, 9pm. Franklin downtown. See you there, Lonnie. Cool. Sounds awesome. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. God, that's so nice. I could like I could just feel myself there with her. Like I totally can understand what she's feeling. For a minute there I was actually with her. Hard to explain. I guess it's a combination of everything. Everything I've read about her, and the good voice acting, and the good writing. I guess it's just all of those coming together. But I could totally feel that. Form. Performance evaluation. Richard... Petter Mock, Supervisor Janice Green Briar. Okay, so that was Jan giving a performance evaluation to one of the workers under her. Evaluation period, yeah, a couple months. Oh, apparently he was exemplary at everything. Supervisor comments Ranger Petter Mack has been indispensable during the course of the prescribed burn preparation and execution. I believe his expertise and dedication has been the deciding factor in the success of a very complex and challenging conservation effort. In the opinion of the Flintlock Forest staff, Rick's contribution to daily operations have become essential to the outfit's continuing success. To this end, I will be formally submitting paperwork requesting his permanent reassignment to this facility. 
Signed, Janice Greenbrier. Senior Conservationist. Oh, looks like this is where she did some painting. I think that's everything in here. Yep. Ooh, what is that? Oh, what does it say? Wildfire? <laughs> he saved her from the raging flames, and then things really heated up. Oh my god. <laughs> Opal LaRue is one of the most distinctive writers in our genre. A tour de force. Wild Wildfire is a uniquely beautiful display of LaRue's talent. Ooh. Look at that big, strong, sexy fireman and his axe. Sewing table. Damn. Wow, so there's a lot of talent running through this family. So let's see, Sam was uh, aspiring to become a writer, and she seemed very good. Um, Terrence was a writer, and I don't know how good he was, but he definitely was a writer. Janice is a senior conservationist with the Forestry Service. And she's a painter. Probably. Probably her. And she also sews. Damn. It's a hell of a lot more than I can do. Whoops. Oh, can I open that? Nope. Textbook. Healthy choices. Skills for a healthful life. Richardson Osborne Acker. Fourth edition, 1993. What is that? That's that radio station that Sam likes. 101.7. Examine map. Lonnie. Holy crap, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner. And I found a secret passage. And it hid Oscar's creepy old stuff in it? Whoa. Really? Oh my god, I have to get to see that. Um, I've got to see this. We're skipping sixth. Alright, so I think that's Lonnie replying. In the closet. Something in the corner. Um, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner. That's wait. Is that the plants I saw behind the thing? So wait, do I access it from the library or do I access it from the closet? Next to mom and dad's room. The arrow's pointing in, so I think I access it from here. Holy crap. I'm really curious now. Secret passage marked on map. Interesting. I was wondering what the hell was up with him, and I guess I'm going to find out, at least partially. Oh my god, did she sew that? That's beautiful. Captain Allegra and the first mate. Your costume, my costume. Holy crap, that's so cool! So, I'm assuming this was sewn by um, Jan. I guess it could have been Sam. Maybe? I don't know, it's, pr it's probably Jan, I would think. But anyway, that's they were going to go as the uh, characters from the story they had written. Sam and... And Lonnie. To that Holly, uh, the Halloween thing. That is so cool. That's a really nice costume. Beautiful. All right. Should I go to the secret room or go up, up, up? 
Sam's dark room. Do not enter if red lights are on. <laughs> well, they're on. But there's no one here, so... It's not like I'm going to interrupt anyone. Um... Should I go down or up first? It probably doesn't particularly matter. Um, let's go up. Okay, well that answers my question. <laughs> or solves my dilemma, rather. We're going down. Alright. So go forwards. Um, so it's in here, right? In there? Right? Yeah. Wait, is that what that sound I was hearing was? <gasps> Maybe that's what that rattling sound is. It's like a something in here. Hello. Wow. This is creepy. Uh, no, don't. Oh, God. I shouldn't have done that. Open, open, open. Okay. Please stay open. I don't really want to be tra trapped down here. God, I can't see anything. There we go. Whoa. Okay, that looks a little bit creepy. Um. Alright, before I read that stuff, what is all this? A bunch of newspaper and or magazine clippings. Um, they're all about fashion. Neckwear, dresses, coats. Pants. Yeah, it's a bunch of clippings about... Underwear, I guess, maybe even? Yeah, just lots of stuff about clothes. Hmm. Alright, well, before I read what's here, I will be right back. Alright, I am back. Let's see what we have here from good old... What's his name? Oscar... Uh, what was his name? I don't remember. I'm sure it'll show up again. Map. Map. Oh, it's from Sam. Okay. Ghost Hunters. Sam and Lonnie. Secret House. Investigation Log. Hidden compartments found. Three. Library. Upstairs Hall. And Foyer. Evidence of... The Supernatural. Discovered. Zero. Ooh. There's some more secrets. Good investigating, Sam and Lonnie. Marked on map. Cool. I'll have to go check them out. Hmm. Crucifix. For oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Ah. Uh, Jesus. That scared the hell out of me. I was just looking at a creepy crucifix, and the fucking light went out. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't want to go down there. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. There's no one here. Fuck, it's broken. No one here. Where did it... Where did the crucifix go? It's not in my hand anymore, and it's not back where it was, and I don't see it on the ground. What the hell? Don't tell me it disappeared. Come on. Fuck, I can't see anything. Hold on. I need some light in here. I didn't get to read it. Where is it? It's not here. Unless it's in my inventory? No. Okay, that's really creepy. I didn't drop it on the stairs, did I? Okay. Anyway... Secret compartment is in the f uh, straight out here all the way to the left, right? Yeah. Here. Here? Oh, here we go. Show flyer. The Misfits, Saturday, October 29th. Maidenhead, a special guest, plus special guest, Maidenhead. Stygia... Hmm. 
At Toth's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me and was so close and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head and I really hope she could tell. I really hope that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. <laughs> oh, she's so shy. But that's so sweet. Aww. I wonder if she ran off with Lonnie or something like that. But anyway, yeah, that brings me back to the topic of the Bibles. So I've seen Bibles all around this place. So I'm presuming they're a fairly religious family. So since Sam seems to be either a lesbian or bisexual, could that be... Like, did they know? Or maybe they don't know and that's why she was maybe scared of telling them, if, if that is the case, that they didn't know? I mean, I definitely could see that being a very big source of either friction, um, either because they do know and they don't like it, or they don't know and she was afraid of telling them. I mean, so far it just seems like she was kind of trapped, like she's shy. She didn't really have any... She just moved to a new place, All right, She's shy, she just moved to a new place, she didn't really know anyone here. Had no friends at the beginning. And... I'm assuming didn't want, couldn't bring herself to tell her parents to come out to her parents. And her parents are kind of trying to keep her inside, like, uh, it sounds like they're an overly protective family. You know, trying to keep her out of harm's way. They don't want her to go out and do anything. They want her to get in trouble. But they're kind of, um, what's the word? S uh, smothering. They're kind of smothering her. That's that's the picture I'm getting so far. Obviously there's a lot more to find, so that might that might change the picture. But so far that is my impression. Um, all right, so where's the other I did that one. Dad's office. So here and to the left. Right here. Here we go. Um, take second combo scrap. What? Write three times. Stop. Turn. What? That's a scrap. I need the whole thing. Something something of... S oh, I think I should say property of Sam. Something something private. Could that be a part of a password there? 50-1? Maybe. Maybe. Ooh, yeah, half of Sam's locker combo added to backpack. Hmm, well, I could brute force the other two uh, numbers, but I'm not going to do that unless I have to. Private, do not read. The green... Oh! She was. Uh, she actually wrote uh, what looks to be a, a novel or a novella or something like that, or a short story. Cool. Heaven, at the edge of the world. Private, do not read. The Green Glacier, Part 2. Samantha Greenbrier, 9th grade. Oh, that was back in 9th grade. 12-1-1992. Cool. Allegra and her scouting party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest's branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed, such lushness, l lushness juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Green Glacier's Amazonian tribe, 
his life hung in the balance. We have to hurry. Allegra's party followed behind, moving quickly as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the Amazon's reaching hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell towards the water, then splashed down, and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A kind of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's. And then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat, soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all. In fact, what looked back at her were the eyes, the face, the hair and hands, and body of a woman. Still in the first mate's clothes, still the first mate. He, she, spoke. In a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, She is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt, and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life, and you can't have her. <laughs> drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt. That's so cheesy. Magical flintlock pistols. Just, I mean, just describing them as magical. <laughs> uh. Still, though, I like it. Okay, so I have half of her locker combination. Um. Hmm. Is there anywhere I can go? Can I, like, can I use this key? I don't think I can. I think it would be used automatically. Hmm. That might be enough to help me get her combination, but I feel like I should actually find it. Alright, is there anything I'm missing? Ooh, this one. Yeah, yeah, this one up here. Um, upstairs. Alright, let's go up. There's one more secret compartment. And it probably has the second half of her locker combo. Alright, where's that at? Am I in it? Yeah, here we go. It should be right here. Oh, it's uh, the Ouija board. And yep, there's the other half. Whoops. Yes, no, yep. It's the Ouija board. She said she got some creepy messages from it. Oh, and these are the messages. Hello? Hello, was the reply. Who are you? Oscar. What do you want? To come back. <laughs> Started to say to come back, and they stopped. Um, between that and the fact that I was down there in Oscar's secret chamber, picking up his creepy crucifix, and then the lights went out, and then the cross disappeared... Yeah, I'm leaving all of the lights on. Yeah. Alright, well, there's the second half. Complete a combination of Sam's Locker added to backpack. So, 0501. To, oh, oh. There's instructions there. To open, turn right three times. Stop at first number. Wait. That is really complex. Um, we'll see how that goes. Like, wait, I thought... Didn't you just turn it... Like, don't you turn it clockwise? On a combination lock and... Oh, wait a minute, I don't even need to do that. Never mind. It doesn't have you enter it that way. Uh, where's our room? Here? Yeah, here. Yeah, you just enter it like this. Alright, 0501. And... Boom! Oh, she used to... Oh. She had a lot of pictures or posters or something taped in here and she took them all out. Maybe she took them with her? Examine photo. Lonnie, 1994. 
Oh, and that's the that's the red hair. That she died it from. Uh, Sam helped her die. Lonnie came over today. But everything was different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie... Do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> yes, it happened! Oh, that's wonderful. And there's a key to the basement. Cigarette pack. Oh, you've been a bad girl. There was nothing wrong added to backpack. What? Isn't that what I just read? Filter cigarettes. Remarkably smooth. Also, we'll totally fuck up your lungs. Goodbye. Alright, I'll even put these back where they came from. Uh, yep, there we go. Gillian Anderson. Gosh, Sam. <laughs> Gentlemen, the magazine for men. Special Shannon Dor Doherty? Not sure how you pronounce that. The great UFO cover-up. Exclusive interview with mogul David Griffin. Finally. Gillian or Jillian? I don't know if it's pronounced Gillian or Jillian. Anderson. From the X-Files. <laughs> okay, well now I have the key to the basement. The fact that... And the fact that Lonnie now knows how Sam feels about her. I mean, well, I mean, she already does know, but at that point, um, that now I know that uh, Lonnie knows how Sam feels about her. It's such a relief. Like, I feel like I just want to go, yes! <gasps> uh, because I was, you know, reading her notes and Sam couldn't say it and I was worried it wouldn't work. But it did. It worked out, at least so far in the story it has. That's wonderful. Alright, basement, well... <laughs> I guess I know where the basement is, right? Downstairs, maybe? Just a guess. Typically, basements are downstairs. Um, where's the stairs down? There. I'm going the wrong way. Alright, is that the basement? No, this is the basement over here. Wait a minute. Wait, I just realized something. The second message was someone crying. Why is it all echoey? weird. It's playing as if I'm hearing it from the other side of the room. This one. That's gotta be from Lonnie. Yeah, that's not from me. That's from Lonnie. What the hell happened? I wonder if maybe she had to go. Like, maybe she had to move. Her parents were moving or something. And then maybe Sam packed up all of her stuff and went away with her? Uh, 
All right, here's the basement. Unlock. Hello, basement. But before I go into the deep, dark, scary basement, that is, that actually is pretty creepy. I hope more lights don't explode while I'm holding crucifixes that magically disappear in secret chambers from a psycho house person owner. Yeah. Anyway, before I go into the basement, I've been playing for over three hours. I freaking love this game, but I don't want to burn myself out on it by playing it for like ten hours straight. So I'm just going to stop. So far, I freaking love this game unbelievably so much. Oh my god. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. I am so glad this game was made. I knew the instant I heard about it that I would love it and would want to play it. And no surprise, I played it, I'm playing it, and I freaking love it. It's amazing. It is basically what I love most about adventure games distilled down into... It is all, it's basically like all the parts that I love about adventure games distilled into one game. It, like in super concentrated form. I love it. It's so good in every way. Well, except the save system. Okay, okay, the save system is bad, but other than that, it's so good. Alright, so I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will definitely be back soon, and we'll go into the basement.